So the likelihood of teams all sticking to the exact meaning of the rules is highly unlikely. F1 engineers are geniuses at finding out cheeky ways to find performance where the rules aren't supposed to allow it. Braun 2009 with the double diffuser and the genius front wing, there was Mercedes in 2014 with the split turbo, and Ferrari just dominating in the early 2000s. And all of those came after big rule changes, and we're about to see one of the biggest rule changes in F1 history. So are we going to see some of the epic silver bullet solutions for massive performance? Or is it going to be more subtle than that? Well, we've got scarves back to run through where the teams are going to be looking to get that magic solution. So let's go. So Braun nailed it in 2009 without much money too. And the story, as we know, was that they're expecting to lose 50% of downforce from the regulations. But Braun managed to gain the majority of that back again. Braun got lots of things right. Now we look at the double diffuser as the kind of the key thing, but there was another two teams that had that in pre-season testing before 2009. Braun got the front wing right, rear brake ducts, lots of little features they got absolutely right. Plus they had, you know, the fantastic Mercedes power unit. And that just gave them the advantage which lasted um, for the majority of the year while everyone caught up with this double diffuser, which was more difficult uh, for some teams than others by the, based on their, their car design or the resources that they had. Then there was Mercedes who had a pretty mediocre season in 2013 only to absolutely dominate with the new engine regulations in 2014. And the only team to really start to pull it back was Red Bull last year. Who does that remind you of? Binning off one season to focus on the next. Mazepin for World Drivers' Championship. They got their advantage in a slightly different way. Rather than finding a kind of a silver bullet solution, they were just simply a able to um, spend more time developing the car before the season and that allowed them to get lots of areas right so they got the power unit in particular right but they got the aero right and they got everything else right and that advantage has really kind of kept them going funnily enough in that same year 2014 their biggest driver has got it seriously wrong. It really is an opportunity for some of the teams to nail it and maybe some of them to bottle it. There could be front runners from last year who are down the back of the pack this year. But then there's the added fact that the teams have had one year longer to develop this car than they originally thought. Don't forget that COVID postponed these new regulations from 2021 to 2022. But what's different this year is that there are areas of the car that the teams really cannot touch. Now this is all for good reason. The FAA have done things pretty differently to before. Rather than designing the rules to remove grip, like back when they removed downforce in 2009 or when they moved to groove tires in 1998, this time they've tried to define the regulations that will create a car that is nicer to the car behind. And you can't do that without being very rigid with some of the important components. But cutting back on the components that can be developed has made the others even more important. After all, that's the only area where you can outdevelop your competitors. And so all of the teams are gonna be looking very closely at very specific areas. First of all, it's gonna be the front wing. Now the front wing will work in quite a different way than it's done before. It won't be able to have the outwash effect that you've had over the past few years. That's been quite limited, uh, but it has a really important effect, not just balancing the car and giving it downforce, but also feeding the underfloor, feeding these tunnels under the car. And teams will play about with how they load the front wing, how steep, how long it will be in different portions as they see what other teams are doing and how it starts to work with the evolving shape of the underfloor that they've got. Equally, the shape of the nose is quite free this year. So you've got an inner structure inside the nose and most teams will probably just crash test this minimum inner structure, allowing them to put body work on the nose to play about with. So there is a potential you could have things like S ducts. You can't really have a cape, but you could still do some quite clever shaping with the nose to try and encourage air under the car to hit those um, ground effect tunnels underneath. Now we've seen this in a small way over the last two years. Some teams, Ferrari, Williams, Haas, have gone for this wide nose shape that then has a way for the airflow to move through the wing and then into the floor and on from there where other teams like Mercedes, Aston, McLaren have gone for this narrow nose design, trying to stay out of the airflow altogether. And there's this cape bit that used to be behind the nose that Craig was talking about earlier, and this is all banned now. So it's gonna be much cleaner flow all the way to the underfloor. But of all things in terms of aero, the key thing teams are gonna play with is the shape of the underfloor. Now, a lot of that is gonna be so subtle that we won't be able to detect it with our eyes. Some of the big obvious things that we'll see is these four fins, it'll fence inside the throat, the inlet 
of the tunnels. Now it's pretty obvious why this bit is so crucial. It's the inlet for the air that creates the majority of the car's downforce, but it is very tightly regulated this year. So the genius design, if they can find that one magic bullet solution, it's gonna be much harder to see. It's the sort of aero advantage that Mercedes have had over the past few years. Nothing exceptionally different. It's just an overall package that works very well together. Not as much as we saw in 2021 with the reg changes, but teams will be playing with that area just to manage the floor coming out from underneath and going back under the floor. Um, I think that again will be much more subtle. You can't have all the big, you know, add-on bits that we had over the past few years. Again, it's going to be done with jagged edges and little cutouts and shaping rather than adding extra bodywork on. If you can find a way to channel more air under the floor, despite the really tight regulations on this, there will be massive performance gains. We spoke about this in the previous episode, but if you energize the air under the rear of the floor, this then makes the diffuser more powerful, generates more flow throughout the entire floor, and then more downforce with it. So we really expect the teams to be focusing on the edges of the floor, especially towards the rear. But the question you're probably thinking is, so that sounds like the general development of a Formula One car. So where are the loopholes? Well, it turns out eliminating those has been a focus of the FIA for these rules. In the past, the regulations have been written in quite a haphazard way. They tend to have been written and then not cross-checked by engineers to see, well, what could you do to kind of beat this regulation? Is it worded? Is there a loophole in the wording? And that's different this year because the team that designed the regulations have worked amongst themselves and with the teams to try and find these loopholes ahead of time. So I'm not expecting there to be something big and dramatic. There'll be lots of little things and maybe you'll find that us in the media, particularly us techies, will start to you know, focus a lot on a very small detail. And I think that's what it's going to be this year. It's going to be lots in the little details and the general shaping and the general concept of the car that's going to make the differences. I'm not expecting, although I'd love to be proved wrong, that we're going to find a big loophole in these regulations. So it's going to be a lot more subtle, but then everyone's going to have a very different concept around this as well. So I think, again, it could be even the concepts that we're talking about rather than some specific loopholes, some magic bullets. So really, be ready for a season all about the teams that are trying to get the whole concept right, rather than coming up with a single silver bullet solution that gains them performance in one area of the car. But really, we're all going to be very happy to be proved wrong. The double diffuser stuff was epic. Same with the F duct and the genius stuff Mercedes did in 2014. But there's something to be said for getting rid of these loopholes. All of those years I've just mentioned did produce championships that were dominated by a single car. And what was so great about last year was that both the drivers and the teams were trading blows. But with the FIA making the loophole closing, for want of a better term, a priority, what happens if Haas figure it out and dominate the whole season? Imagine that, Mazepin, Schumacher for the title, final race. You couldn't write that. If there is a big solution, a big loophole, or perhaps something that creates loads of turbulence behind the car. The FAA have said that they're not going to make rule changes mid-season to counteract this. Uh, they don't want it to be a very reactive season in terms of rule changes. So what you're going to find is that some teams will be able to catch up that solution. Uh, some teams won't have the budget and won't have the wind tunnel time to catch up. Uh, or maybe it just simply doesn't work with their concept and their car setup. So what you may find if someone does find a solution is going to be a race amongst the teams and their budgets to try and catch up with uh, that uh, advantage. You should check out this playlist to get to understand all of these rule changes before the cars get announced in a couple of weeks. Thanks to Craig for walking us through this and thanks to you lot for watching and subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next one.